How do we do it? It's a question we probably ask hundreds of times per day. Most of the time we don't even think about it. But how do you go about doing something? What's the process? Most of the time it's automatic force. Uh, I've shared with you over the years many times that I enjoy yard work. I find it uh, therapeutic. Uh, but my least favorite job is trimming shrubbery. I don't particularly care for that, so I can usually talk myself out of that job, put it off as long as possible. So what do I do? What's the answer? Try to get Rhonda to do it. So far, that has not worked. Try to get Allison to do it. That has not worked. So eventually, I have to figure out a plan. So here's my plan. Tackle it first thing in the morning. You know, the hardest job, a job you really don't want to do, you tackle it first, right? Number two, I tackle my small shrubs and get them done. I can have a sense of accomplishment. I'm, I'm almost finished. Number three, I have two large shrubs that, for me at least, require a ladder. So tackle them next. Get those done. Number four, I try to remind myself, if there's a sprig here and there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Number five, I remind myself, get up most of the clippings, but you don't have to get them all. You can cover up a lot of stuff with pine needles and mulch, right? Nobody ever know. Number six, take a lot of breaks. I like to take breaks. And number seven, when I'm finished, Shout hallelujah, because I don't have to do it again the next spring. So how do you do something? We ask ourselves that question, maybe subconsciously, hundreds of times a day. Well, how do you pray? We talk about prayer a lot. What's the process of prayer? What's the path of prayer? How can we be effective prayers? We have one of the great verses today in all of Scripture. And I'm going to ask you, if you know it, to say it with me. It's 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Let's say it together. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. That one verse has four steps to prayer. First of all, humble ourselves. In humility, we have the spirit of prayer. It is to bow our hearts and our heads to God. Uh, here we have the attitude of prayer. Humility is to acknowledge that God is the almighty and eternal God. And we are his children. It is to acknowledge that God is on his throne and we are privileged to do this thing called prayer. Humility is to acknowledge that God is Savior and Lord and Master and he's over all and in all and through all. And then humility is to come to God just as we are. We can take our mask off, no pretense, no pride. We come to God just like we are. Come with our brokenness, come with our loneliness, come with our pain, come with our anger. You can come drunk. You can come high, you can come low. That's what God says. You can come sweet, you can come angry. But prayer, humility means that, folks, we come to God. God knows you. He knows me. He knows everything about us. He knows us better than we know the hairs on our heads, the Scripture says. So humility means that we come to God just like we are. Did your mom ever tell you to get off your high horse? Did your mom ever tell you to get off your high horse? You know what that phrase means? It means that if you're on your high horse that we feel like we're better than somebody or we're superior 
or we think we're smarter or we're more intelligent. You know where the phrase comes from? In medieval times, rank was reflected by the size of your horse. And so a person of nobility rode a much larger, bigger horse than a commoner. And so thus the phrase, get off your high horse, come down, that person of rank, come down off that horse. And so if somebody says to us, get off your high horse, it means to stop acting like thinking you're better than somebody. Humility is to acknowledge, hey, he's God. And we're his children. And we have this wonderful opportunity to pray. That's where we start. With the spirit, the attitude of prayer. Secondly, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Pray simply means to speak to God. To have a conversation with God. It means to thank him for the blessings of the day. It means to ask him for his help, for us, for our family, for others, for people we're concerned about. And by the way, you do know that when we speak to God, we do not have to use fancy words. We do not have to use many words. Listen to the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. This is Matthew 6, verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And so pray. Speak to God. You can do that. I can do that. Have a conversation with Jesus. One of my favorite stories in the whole world is of the woman who went to a fairly new pastor in town and asked if he would come and visit with her father who was sick. And he agreed. And so a few days later, he came, and he found the man propped up in bed. And there was a chair by the bed, an empty chair by the bed. And the minister walked in and said, uh, you must be expecting me. And the man said, I have no clue who you are. And the minister said, well, I thought by the chair, the empty chair, that you were expecting me to come. And the man said, if you'll close the door, I want to talk to you just a minute about the chair. And so the minister closed the door and the man said, been in church all my life, but I've always struggled with this thing called prayer. He said the preacher would preach on prayer and most of the time his words would just go right over my head. And to tell you the truth, this man's name was Joe. Joe said, I got to where I just didn't pray. For a number of years I just, I just quit. I didn't pray. He said one day I was having a conversation with a friend, and the friend said this to me. He said, Joe, just sit down in a chair. Put another chair in front of you. And act like Jesus is sitting in the chair. And it's not spooky because Jesus said, Surely I will be with you always to the end of the age. And you just sit in that chair, and you imagine Jesus sitting in a chair in front of you, and you just have a conversation with Jesus. And Joe said, You know what? So I started doing that. And many days, I talk to Jesus like that for a couple of hours per day. But then Joe said to the minister, don't tell my daughter. She would think I was crazy. She'd have a nervous breakdown and carry me off to the funny farm. Well, the minister encouraged Joe in what he was doing. And the minister prayed with him and left. About two weeks later, he got a call from the daughter saying that Joe had died. And the minister asked if he died peacefully, and the daughter said yes. The daughter said, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I left to go to the store, and Daddy called me over and told me one of his corny stories and kissed me on the cheek, and about an hour later, I came back, and Dad had died. But then the daughter said this. There was one little thing that was weird. When I came home and I found Dad... He had leaned over 
and his head was resting in the chair. His head was resting in the chair. Folks, prayer is just having a conversation with God. And you can do that, and I can do that, any day, any place, and any time. If my people, say it with me, please, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And then the third phrase is what? Seek my face. You see, humility is the spirit of prayer. And pray, that's where we speak to God. And then the Scripture says, and seek my face. Over and over again in Scripture, we are called upon to seek God. Matthew 6, 33, Jesus says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus encourages us to seek God first. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, Verse 29, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul. Did we hear that? It's promised. If we seek him, what? We will find him. But notice this, it gets better. The psalmist says, Psalm 14, 2, the Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand any who seek God. Did we get it? Jesus tells us to seek Him. We are promised that if we seek Him, we will find Him. And the psalmist says the whole time that God is looking for people who are seeking Him, God will find you and me. So if humility is the spirit of prayer, and pray is to speak to God, then to seek Him is to listen for God and to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. To seek Him is to listen for God and to follow the leadership of the Spirit. Let me tell you a couple of stories. John Eldridge is a name that maybe you know. John's written widely. He's got a ministry out in Colorado. He and his wife Stacy lived there with their boys. And uh, I love to read John's writings. John tells that his family had a tradition that every year after Thanksgiving sometime, they went out in their own woods and cut down their Christmas tree. Now, they went out on their own property. This meant they usually got a Charlie Brown Christmas tree, but it was leased on their property, and it was their tree, and it was a family outing. And John said he and Stacy usually envisioned, uh, you know, a hike with the family, uh, sitting around a fire, drinking hot chocolate. They envisioned board games. Just a great family time. Well, one year, they went the weekend after Thanksgiving. Got it? The weekend after Thanksgiving weekend to cut down their tree. A big blizzard came, two feet of snow. They decided they'd better head home. Uh, it took them about an hour, or they slid off in a ditch, took about an hour to get the Suburban out. When they got up on the road, they had two flat tires. They had one spare. They had a can of Fix-A-Flat, but it was frozen. They left the flashers on, so the battery ran down. It was 10 degrees, and the wind was howling, so you get the picture. It was an ordeal. And here's what John Eldred says about that. They were not supposed to go that weekend. He says that both he and his wife Stacy had prayed about it and they were supposed to go the Saturday after Thanksgiving. But they were tired. Their boys had friends over and so they went the next weekend. But they had both sensed that they were supposed to go get their tree the Saturday after Thanksgiving but they did it their way and they waited to the next weekend and got caught in a blizzard. It may be that somebody out here this morning is listening to that story and saying, God don't care when we cut down a Christmas tree. Listen. Seeking God means that we seek Him in every area of our lives. What do most of us do? We do it our way. 
just like John and Stacy. We do what we want to do. We do it the way we've usually done it. We do business as usual. We do it our way. How many of us will really decide that we're going to be seekers of God in every area of our lives? Might change the way we do some things. Maybe you've heard the funny story about the guy that was trapped in a flood. If you've ever been in a flood, you know it's not any fun. Flood water's rising. The guy prayed, figured God would, or trusted God to uh, rescue him. A neighbor comes along in a canoe and offers to help. The guy says, no, I prayed about this, trusting God. No thanks. Pretty soon the police come along in a boat. And the guy says, oh, I trusted God. No thanks. After a while, water's rising. Guy's standing on the roof of his house. Helicopter, rescue helicopter comes, lowers the ladder. You ever tried to climb one of them ladders? I don't really think I'd want to do that, but you ever tried to climb one of those? They tell him to climb the ladder. He says, no thanks, I've trusted God. God's going to rescue me. And he drowns. Flood water's rising, he drowns. Ends up in heaven, talks to God, says, God, I prayed, I trusted you. And here I am in heaven. God said, listen, I sent you a canoe. I sent you a boat. And I sent you a helicopter. And you didn't listen at all to any of that. You refused them all. How many of us are like that? Or how many of us are willing to really seek, seek the Lord while he may be found? You say it with me one more time. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and the last one is turn from our wicked ways. Wow. The fourth step in prayer is to surrender. To turn loose of our sins and give them to God. You see, sometimes we say, well, I don't feel too good about my prayer life. I don't feel like my prayers go anywhere. Could it be that there's sin in my, in my life, in your life? Now let me be very clear here. Sinners can pray. Okay? Because we're all sinners. Sinners can pray. And sinners can be good prayers. Because we're all sinners. But a very important part of prayer is to confess our sins and repent of our sins. He says, turn from our wicked ways. And that if we do that, God will hear. He'll forgive our sins and heal our land. Have you ever read Pilgrim's Progress? Christians climbing the mountain to the eternal city. And on his back is the burden of sin. And he crawls up to the top of the mountain and he kneels before the cross. And his sins roll down the mountain and into a sepulcher and are buried. And Christian is freed of that burden. You see, that's what Jesus Christ does. He died on the cross he rose from the grave. He sets us free, folks. He lifts that burden. Through Jesus Christ, every person in here can be free from the burden of sin and guilt. We simply have to confess and repent and receive the wonderful gift of forgiveness. Now let me say this to you this morning. You do understand this, don't you? That forgiveness is the miracle of God. It is the miracle of God through Jesus Christ our Lord that you and I can be forgiven of all sin. We can may be made pure and clean in the sight of God. What a miracle. What a miracle and what a gift. So, uh, here's the question. How do you do it? I want to be an effective prayer, don't you? Four simple steps. Humility. That's the spirit of prayer. Speak to God. Just have a talk with Him. Seek Him. And surrender. Let go of those sins. And let God have His wonderful way 
in our lives. Our hymn today is 591, a great hymn. Have thine own way, Lord. And we're going to